Another Founder Wisdom Pod with legendary Grace Gong today. She is founder and host at Smart Venture Podcast, which you might have heard of. She's also a LinkedIn top voice in finance, an ex-VC associate and uh, author in Amazon. Uh, she's number one in the venture capital category or has been. Uh, really impressive person. Grace has interviewed various folks that I admire and I'll uh, barrage her with questions about that today. Uh, Grace gracefully made the time for us today, um, amongst uh, other things. So thank you so much for being here, Grace. Can you briefly introduce yourself and tell us about your businesses? Yeah, totally. Thank you so much, Charles, for having me. And I'm super honored to be on the show. Um, so I'm Grace Gone, and I think I really appreciate that you read my bio on LinkedIn. Uh, so what I do essentially right now is like I run my and host my own podcast called Smart Venture Podcast. Um, how I started my podcast was because of like I came to the U.S. as an international student and I didn't really have much of a business connection. Um, when I moved to Silicon Valley, I encountered a lot of like friends or like just people who are who went to school here. They would just run into like big tech executives or unicorn founders on their campus. And I kind of wanted to create that kind of experience for my younger self. And because of like, you know, I didn't really know anybody. And then, uh, so I wanted to just like creating this, like, you know, this talk or like basically a coffee chat experience for people who may not live in Silicon Valley or who may not have access to these people to also hear some questions like what would, a normal person or like ambitious younger person would ask these people. So that's how I started my podcast. And, um, you know, like you mentioned, I previously worked in um, VC. And then before that, I also like uh, wrote books, like uh, where I interview a lot of funders and investors on like basically how they invest or how they build a company. Right. And was it serendipity that you fell into Silicon Valley and VC or was that on purpose? I think it's serendipity. Um, I got a job after school in the Bay Area and then I just moved here and I realized a lot of people working in tech and then that's how I kind of stumble upon it, onto it. But I do say like I did really enjoy entrepreneurship uh, when I was younger. I In my high school, I started like a student run like English newspaper in my school in China. And so there was that. So I definitely loved the entrepreneur <laughs> entrepreneur spirit right because well, to me looking at your um profile you check all the boxes you know it's like perfect path but you uh, it's probably not <laughs> that way um looking at your own career so far like has it been the typical messy like all direction and then uh, somewhat increasing with time because me you know like you did the podcasting that's perfect uh, author perfect silicon valley check vc check it, it's like somewhat my ideal career you know are a good part of it uh, but I'm pretty sure it's been messy in the back end yeah totally I definitely don't think it was a perfect path I think it's pretty chaotic um in a way um because I yeah I feel like there's so many times that I absolutely do not know what I was doing and I just but I constantly wanted to surround myself with like people who are smarter than me or like people who are also extremely ambitious and I got very very lucky I kind of like just met people my age that are also doing similar things who are like trying to create companies or who are just like super ambitious like I just got really lucky to like met them when I moved to Silicon Valley right let's start with uh, BC because we're going to talk about podcasting we're going to talk about authorships and lessons that you learned from a uh, prominent founder with VC itself what's the mental model is it that oh I have I'm flush with cash and I'm going to invest in these startups. One out of 10 is going to succeed. And in the meanwhile, I'm going to get like huge data on how to create a successful startup. What's the mental model behind it? And do you need to be rich to be a VC? Um, I was a associate when I got hired. So like, it was not like I was spending my own money to invest in any sort. It's like, we're sourcing deal for our fund to invest in certain companies. So I think that's very different than like if you're angel investing or if you're, uh, you know, if you're running your own fund, I feel like those different, those are like have, have very different mental mindset. As a younger VC, like um, 
I personally categorize in venture capital, there's like kind of like three roles, right? Like the first type of people who are like deal sourcing, like typically are like the younger people who are like super connected, extroverts who are like out there all the time. Uh, so where they collect the information and then kind of like feeding into the ecosystem. And there's like the middle part, which is like people who may be having certain industry expertise. So for example, right now it'd be like AI or like some kind of very specific zone. Like we, I just talk about crypto with, other people so basically like if you work in an industry and then you have a lot of expertise in xyz and then they you probably know an industry better or like you are really good at like research and like those are like type of people who can identify what's going to be a good investment to invest in and then there's like the third type of people who are i would i would say like kind of like you know helping the founder basically adding value to the founder Advisors. or like raising funding or like basically raising funding for the fund or like kind of people who are more like like focusing on the asset like so basically like after you invest in a company how do you make sure the company uh keep thriving as well as like basically also helping them to raise the next round so like these people who are like focusing on the back end so like, i feel like i identify as like these three type of major role like I would definitely identify myself as like the first role because like I was younger at, when I joined as well as like I feel like I was more of the super connector like knowing a lot of people type of person so um those are my kind of like overall category in terms of the mental model I think like because of you know as a younger person you're not really investing your own money so it's very different than like when like I guess like it's very different like as like if you are already um kind of like more senior having more stake on the table um I think like a lot of it were like identifying the trends like what's popular about like people my age back in time and like as well as like you know providing the feedback as like a consumer like in a way that like just like having the overall profile of like well the company like having like a lot of deep understanding into like a particular industry because we're like tickle te like technically very young um so that's like the general theme i would say and then in terms of like vc's general model it's like um a lot of people would think as like you know if you invest in one big deal your career is kind of set um because of like vc invests in many deals and then like if one took off um, you may already make back all your investment in other companies and then like because of like most companies fail. So uh, essentially like finding that unicorn or like finding that breakout, like find, finding that like breakthrough company, it's like extremely important. Right. And tell us like floodgates, right? Uh, building breakthroughs court member, what 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 is this? And tell us about Mike Maples in the meanwhile. Uh, so like, so that's a program that I uh, was really lucky to be a part of. So essentially we are founders, uh, Floodgate pick like, uh, I believe 50 founder in my cohort to helping us to like educate us about the venture space and like, like helping us to kind of like funding companies and stuff like that. So I personally learned tremendously from the program. Um, and I'm very thankful for, uh, many of like my mentors there are like uh, Aris to be specific <laughs> so I definitely really appreciate the program so it was like very helpful and I feel I definitely encourage everyone to apply if they have an next batch right um you talked about super connector I guess that's one of the theses behind your podcast what are the other theses behind it um what are the exponential mental model and network effects behind a podcast um, I think like, I personally don't think podcast is where I like, I would say build the network. I would say like, it's kind of like where I wanted to kind of learn similar to what you're doing right now. You know, uh, I think like, it's a great way to actually learn from someone because of like, you're having the kind of like, the conversation that like you know you're asking the question that you are curious about as a person uh, I definitely feel like that's a very lucky way for us to learn about something I also think of like what my listener would want because I personally feel like I I was the consumer of a lot of podcasts and like a lot of like audio books because I personally wanted to build a business and I felt like when the hosts are like asking some question I personally care about instead of like 
maybe the bigger very general quest trend that would be great because like when you hear about like the ward leader when they're talking with other ward leaders like they're talking about very big picture things like you know uh basically solving like a really mega word problem but like as a regular ambitious like individual uh you know your question or my question are very different than you know the word leader's perspective so I kind of feel like I wanted to create that for like my audience as well because I'm such a fan of like these type of content myself like big fan of Tim Ferriss or like all these like other young hustler type of people that are providing these kind of like content diet for myself so, so I kind of like when I create these kind of content I definitely have that in mind in terms of mental model, I guess, like, just learning from people, uh, like, as a regular person, <laughs> like, as, like, a word leader's perspective. So yes, those are things. You made your network physically, if my understanding is right, like, meetups and stuff. Was that your model to network, quote, unquote? I don't particularly network. I think, like, I get really lucky by being in Silicon Valley, because, like, I would say um, I met a mentor in like an improv class the person ended up to be a very big executive at a very big company mm -hmm. and like which I don't know like I just treat them as like a regular person um so like I don't think I intentionally like trying to I mean of course like as any young and ambitious person you would like show up in every event like you would go to like a tech crunch uh, you know, hackathon or like you would go to YC demo day or, or like you you would try to go to these things, right? But um the 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 thing is like I feel like the my biggest like strongest network are not coming from things I intentionally do. It's more coming from like when I'm relaxed, I go to let's say like an improv class or like I go to some sort of like, you know, uh extracurricular activity and then I met someone that's in a more organic way that I establish a friendship beyond uh, just uh, a really curated relationship. So I feel like those are a lot better than like if I try to get something from you. So fully agree. That's the way to do it. I'm going to do more of that. And I'm currently doing uh, more of that. The book now, um, the book, the book. I had various book publishers on my pod uh, two yesterday. We talked about GPT building your books and so <laughs> forth. They told me it was like more or less realistic. Um, we said that books, you know, were amazing business opportunities because it's really intimate, just like a podcast. Someone is reading like at the end of this day in his bed. Uh, the podcast is like while I cook or while I do some sports, really intimate relationships. And especially with the physical version, holding something perennial in your hands. What was your model behind the book? And what kind of effect did it have in your career? Um, I think it's kind of similar to having a podcast. Like, so my book are like interview style book anyway. So it was kind of like uh, me asking about people telling up their story by both stuff. So I would say like, essentially, like, I think I learned a lot from having a conversation with people I personally love the interview style stuff myself like for example as mentioned like Tim Ferriss is such a role model for me um I think like his stuff is like just super real like I don't really like the super polished book in general like I don't like when you have actually just one sentence of that idea and then like you build up on it like like you mentioned the chat GPD version of it so essentially you gave the like central idea and then like ask someone to spin off like 400 pages on something I just personally feel like that was a waste of my time but I feel like when you're having a conversation there's so many in intricate like smaller points that you can learn from when people mention about some detail that you're like okay that really resonate with me or like things that I just didn't even know that exists like that's like actually from like smaller conversation so for me like writing books similar to like a, having a podcast is essentially just different platforms to like record what you're doing and like I I am a very big content consumer as like I'm a huge audible fan but I bought so much books um, like so much physical books or like so much like audiobooks myself so like I feel like it was just a way that I kind of wanted to give back to like the books that kind of like educated me 
to a degree. Um, so I know it sounds kind of like no, it's not. I totally feel you. It's I. It's probably twenty five ish percent of the. It's certainly the reason I started the pod. That, and nowadays it's still twenty five percent of the reason. So fully feel you on that. I'm also a Tim Ferriss baby. I just yesterday I mentioned Tim Ferriss in a post saying that he inspired my full. Uh, productivity thing and it's been such mm-hmm. a long time you know it's been a decade already that I read for our work week which inspired my digital nomad life 50% of the reason and that I forgot about how to explain why I'm so productive you know and, and it's, it's yeah. weird so yeah shout out to Tim and giving yeah. back is important <laughs> in this humanity you know there's there's so many folks that helped us reach this point of our career that I feel we need to to give back. Um, talking about that, I need to come back to the the VC thing. What's been the the ROI of your VC career so far? Has it paid off like really big time? In which you're like, holy shit, I'm rich because of a decision I made ten years ago. How how is the? Has it been a good decision? Um, like I was an associate, so my financial gain is purely my salary. <laughs> so it was not like I'm like a big time partner that like you know getting like a lot of like the mega returns in a way and then this is a long game it takes like about 10 years like five to ten years so actually having an exit so like for the like so like in terms of like financial gain for me it was not my most um was like things that drives me um well it was just like my learning journey so like especially as a younger person I feel really lucky to be in the industry that I um fascinates about like so it's kind of like now like you know I'm I've always been like an like entrepreneurial person so like I I feel like founding my own company is my dream and then like I'm I feel like I'm living my dream as like creating something on my own um so like I never really drive to buy money to a degree because I personally feel like if you really want to make money, um, I think you should become a software engineer. <laughs> so, right. Um, like I, I feel like so. There's like I, I think like there's different ways to make money than like just that. Like I feel like I'm more interested in in the in the journey as like you know you can talk to entrepreneur all day that's like your job and then like you can actually learn about a different sector every single day I feel like a lot of these like intrinsic characteristic that I just like absolutely love about that job like you know you can I just like learn a different sub like subsector every single day and you're talking to the smartest people in that industry I feel like I'm just really lucky to have that experience then making myself a lot of money <laughs> so that's right. how i think about things right and all of that is also somewhat monetizable uh, let's keep that in mind all that knowledge it also brings a nice equilibrium to your life i think is a point that you're making for example timmy ferris uh, is also good at talking about self-improvement you know it's not only business it's also about mental health and all of these things which i think is super important because you can be that 400k a year uh, software engineer suffering from depression and not being happy with their job. Small other comment on on that. It's kind of interesting to see that in the 2000s, it was being a, a Wall Street trader, right? And nowadays, it's like straight up a software engineer making 500k to a million per year. It's quite impressive how the times have evolved and indeed software is eating the world. Is it the, the next step? Is it like people that know how to program or interact with AIs? is a question that that popped to my mind. But coming back to my last VC question before we get in the esoteric realm, um, you've seen probably VCs succeed big time, I guess, like Mike Maples, for example. So you didn't get to live it yourself, but you, you've you seen the proof that this thing works massively if you are hella smart, right? Uh, I definitely feel like a lot of them have a really admirable career like Mike or like anybody else from my book and I have a lot of admiration for them and I think in my general sense is like I don't think most people are in for the money of course like making money or like having financial gain or like especially being really responsible for the LPs are like extremely important um but I think like most people actually just passionate about technology and like actually 
also enjoy the journey of finding that unicorn, like being able to talk to a lot of um, just interesting uh, smart people. So like, I feel like a lot of like the intellectual stimulation are what drives a lot of these really successful investors. And I think that also helps them to kind of not just focus on the financial game because like technically it takes forever to kind of like seeing the basically like the feedback loop is super long and like it's extremely hard to see like if your investment actually makes sense until like many many years later so i i feel like a lot of the successful investors are also just focusing on like going through the journey than like uh purely about the money making perspective right maybe it starts that way right like very primalistic either oh i've seen this vc make tons of money or oh i need to uh, prove that I'm right, you know, to my parents, they see that I'm living in this place, like this random branch, you know, and uh, no one knows who I am. And, and then it it continues on more sustainable fuel. Uh, that is the intellectual curiosity, which is also why some days I'd, I'd love to be an analyst myself, you know, just spending my day studying startups and getting insights. And yeah, like you said, talking with very, the very smart, the smartest in their field is, is so rewarding. Um, and talking about that, you've talked with a bunch of smart people. Instead of pointing out like my favorite folks that you spoke about, I want to let you probably determine like the top three folks that you spoke with uh, that people maybe either don't know about or either the insights that you gain from talking to them are are more or less known. I want you to yeah, dive deep into these and, and dig down some insights that you got from speaking of the smartest and these insights can be tim ferris style you know it can be personal it can be vc um you decide um (laughs) wherever you start with that okay so uh i think like this may not fall under the people don't know category but i definitely feel like my conversation with the co-founder of square was like extremely interesting because uh i think when he told me about like meeting Jack Dorsey, like he said, like Jack Dorsey was his intern when Jack was like 15 years old. And then he like later on when he, when they both started square together, like, uh, you know, basically he shared with me, like the finding co-founder secret. It's like, you should not look at the other person as like, you know, w- my learning was like, you know, you shouldn't look at them as like what's on their resume or like what's what they look like. Don't don't like default to think someone is incapable because of like their age or like their gender or like race or anything. So like look beyond their surface level is really important, which really resonates with me because I feel like in Silicon Valley, it's so easy to look at someone based on, OK, where do you go to school? Where do you work? And like. Uh, what other things have you accomplished in your career? And like, so to pick a co-founder based on that, because like you may feel like, oh, like investor will really value that. But in the end of the day, I think like finding a good co-founder is like based on the shared value and like the shared experience that you will go through together. Like, will this person, you know, not take advantage of you if you, you know, when, stuff hit the fan or like so basically there's a lot of challenges in your entrepreneur journey instead of looking at the super surface level things maybe look deep down on like what are things that you know actually matters in accomplishing the startup success so those are like that's like one of the lessons I've learned I have a question here that might feel interesting to the audience um so Jack was um the uh, I believe Jim was his name right um yeah he was Jim's intern. Is that correct? At 15? I think so. Yeah. Like, like I, I think based on my memory, it is the case. Yeah. Okay. So my question is, do you think that Jack first like got really inspired by Jim? He got on and founded Twitter and then he came back to Jim because he was like, dude, I learned so much from you back then. And you were really an inspiration to me. Let's create something together. Did you study that part of the story or? Um, my memory for it was only limited to like the essence of the story than like the detail of like, oh, if he think like how he think about things, because 
Uh, everything in that book were from Jim's perspective. So like, I don't really know what Jacks think about Jim, <laughs> but like, I mean, I, I feel like it was my general learning was kind of like, you know, always treat people right. Like, you know, even when they're like your intern or like when they're working for you at one point, you never really know who is gonna like, I don't think this is the reason that you treat people right. But like, in the end of the day, like you never really know who is going to be, uh, you know, making the most amount of impact into your life. And, and essentially my lessons from reading that book or like my takeaway was kind of like treat everybody with respect and like, you know, value people not based on their appearance. So those are my learnings. So in, in terms of like the detail, I personally don't know. I didn't really, I'm not BFF with any of them. And like, I I have a lot of respect for what they have accomplished. So I can't really say for the people who are in the book. So Yeah, I'm, I have missed that book. I don't know how it got um, over my radar. Uh, I'm certainly going to have a read at, at that book and I'm going to invite Jim to the, the pod because Square is one of my favorite company. Uh, Jack is such a, Odd Duck also is one of my favorite founders. And when you were um, saying you never know, you know, well, it's the same with Vitalik Buterin. Uh, what an incredible young man, you know, and that brain was incredible at 15 years old. Um, that, that guy went to create amazing things. So you're fully right. I'll give you the time, though, to give us like one more um, interesting lesson slash interesting person that you talked to and that really marked your soul and your heart and that that is still guiding you up to this day yeah totally another really interesting conversation i had was with the former ceo of um chipotle former co-ceo of chipotle mexican grill um chipotle. monty moran like he is um so the things that he have done is like he have chatted with twenty thousand chipotle employees like like can and then he went through the employee training program undercover, um, just to see like how the company work. And then I just personally felt tremendous amount of respect for people like this who are, you know, putting down their like outside of like you know like do you imagine like a CEO going to undercover to go into your store yeah, or just in training 20k program? employees that's so much time you know yeah so I feel like it's something that like you don't really see a regular people do and I feel like that's also the only way you can actually learn how people think about your training program how people actually think about your company how people actually go through the day-to-day working at this company right and I personally feel like those are things that like every CEO should kind of equip themselves or should have been doing because of like that's the only way you can understand what people have to go through to get to where they are um, and you can see a lot of problem by just being a part of the journey and I personally find that was really inspiring and then chatting with 20,000 employees is insane like I don't I don't know if my lifetime I have chatted with 20,000 people in general <laughs> but like I do think it's extremely impressive to you know having the heart to be open to learn from people who um who are actually on the ground working for you or working with you and I feel like those are just like like you saw like a mental model, like if there's a mental model. I feel like though this mental model is definitely extremely important to like actually be able to open and learn from people who are actually working in the industry. So I feel like those are like my biggest takeaway or like some stories that kind of like really resonate with me. And he also said about like, you know, um, even you think your job is like, maybe really mediocre or whatever like you know you're not really doing the best job or like you're doing something that you feel like maybe it's a waste of your time but you have to work through these like jobs that are like really not cool or like you know something that you may not really love to actually be worth the job that you 
actually can do like or like if you treat the job that you're like on the day to day as like something well this is my learning right like I don't really remember the exact word that he said but like I do think my learning was you have to treat all the small job like it's a big shot and then one day someone will find out like you know you've done this really really well and then the the next opportunity will present itself so I think like doing being really treating every single day as like a special day it's like extremely important no matter how small the job is right and not distancing yourself too much from um tinkering because like at the exact level it's always thinking and planning but you need to execute and get that data to come back to make better plans i think is one important lesson here um pod's already overgrazed but it was amazing where can uh people find out more about you thank you so much uh, i'm grace gong on linkedin or grace gong gg on twitter and my podcast talk is called smart venture podcast it's on youtube spotify apple wherever you listen to your show